Hello and welcome to Triplicate Electronics, home of interesting electronic projects. Today we have a Casio DH100 Windhorn. I bought this off a friend at some point in the 90s and never really used it. And it's been sitting in a cupboard ever since. And I got it out recently to put on eBay along with a lot of other stuff. So, shall, first up, shall we see if it works? OK, it takes five AA batteries, or an external power supply, which I can't find at the moment. So we're going to run it off batteries. Uh, there they are, in the battery compartment. So I'll put the battery compartment together. It's tight enough for now, and see what she does. OK, there's the power on switch, that's good, so if you press a key, oh! A pretty horrible noise, very loud noise, with somewhere in the background what sounds like a saxophone sound. Now, I have to be honest here, I did turn it on a few days ago and discovered it did that, so did a bit of digging on eBay. This is probably not the best way of doing this. So, this is one that was on eBay that says with squeal fault and that was going at £32 and here we have one going on eBay for £120 and if we scroll down to the description it says desquarked from which we conclude that this is a pretty common fault with them or indeed it happens to all of them now I reckon if I now googled DH100 squawk fault uh, it would tell me how to fix it somebody would have posted a, a video or a description somewhere on how to fix it but I think it would be far more fun if we actually took it apart and had a look and see if we could find the fault ourselves so, let's get stuck in. OK, first entertaining thing about this is all the screws are in the back. So to work on it, we really have to stand it on the horn. Uh, so to do this, we've got a clamp. Right, I think we start by taking the batteries out again. Oops, left it turned on. And yes, there is a screw under the batteries, as ever. Okay, have the correct tool to hand before you turn the camera on. Note to self. Don't turn the bath piece off. Can I? screwdrivers something I bought it seemed like a good idea at the time that you put the screw in there right size screw 
All right, so they screw like that and you can hit holes them while you screw them in but they never work too well because the end's too big. And this one's really chewed up which is why it's not doing a good job of getting these screws out. So... problem with these screwdrivers it won't get in there right okay a selection of screwdrivers got to have one to work now there we go right and this one in here I think Okay, now all these keys are sort of on a made to look like wood wind instrument keys, and I suspect once we try taking this off, they're all going to disintegrate into little pieces. We'll try anyway. Oh, no, so far so good. This end here is stuck, I think, in the Lamp. Maybe that isn't all the way out. Feels like it is. Yeah, there we go. Board to prop this end up on. And let's see what we've got. Okay, let's have a look and see what we've got. Uh, starting at the top here, that I'm guessing is the breath sensor. I'm curious to know what's in there since it only has two wires coming out of it. Which is, there's a pipe for your breath to go out of which exits at the bottom. Uh, that is the circuit board. There's a switch under there which I think does semitone or key change or something. And all the other switches are under this board here. And those are transpose and sound buttons. That switches the breath on and off, all of which go via this board to this ribbon controller. Okay, and here we have the the battery holder with the positive and negative onto the main board. And down at the bottom, the speaker of course. Um, moving on to the interesting bits. So on the top here we have a very sophisticated for the time surface mount board with a big chip on it um, which I guess does all the sound generation um, I will need to look that up in a minute in a minute and whoops a little chip there, a little 8 pin thing again they very helpfully put the name next to it. Let's go and fiddle the light about and zoom in. Oh yes, it says IC24558. So we should be able to look that up. And similarly, the big one, it says UPD78C11G. Now whether that's just a Casio custom chip, I don't at the moment know. Well, I will find out. Well, wrong way. So, on the board below, this is more like the sort of style I would expect for the time, we have 
We get to focus on that LA4182, which by the looks of the the fat pins in the middle, they're not really pins. They look they I guess they're heat sinks going to a big patch of copper under the underneath of the board. So I guess that's the power amp chip. So I don't think we can get any further without lifting that top circuit board and having a look at all of the board underneath. So I'll put the camera back on the stand and we'll see if we can get in there. Okay so I've lifted that board up and look at that. A load more components on the bottom as well. Mmm. And if we look down below, there's another chip with a huge heat sink, which may or may not be also be a power amp or be another power amp, I don't know. Um, so that's a bit of a contrast between this surface mount with lots of components on both sides and this single sided through the hole with lots of wire links. So what I am going to do is I am going to look up some of these chip numbers and see if I can find out what is doing what. So back in a minute. Okay, so we've disconnected one of the leads from the speaker. So, it's not going to squawk at us anymore. So now I'm going to turn back on, find that on switch. at the input to the okay so as we would have expected power amplifier is faithfully amplifying the squawk so I'm guessing since this bottom board contains only the power amplifier and the other chip was a voltage regulator the signal is coming from the top board uh, now there's this ribbon cable between the top board and the bottom board which has power supplies and I guess audio on it possibly one or two other things uh, so somewhere on this ribbon cable will be the audio output to the volume control and the amplifier so shall we see if we can find it That one, I think. Okay. 
So I looked into also, or I looked into all what all the chips were on this, and that is just an amplifier, and this is just an eight-bit micro, uh, which is surprising to say that it's doing all the sound generation, um, including presumably storing in its internal ROM the the sampled sounds for the instruments. Okay, had a bit of a poke about and I put a capacitor on the end of my probe so as not to stick huge amounts of DC at my little mixer and found that Following the tracks back, the output comes from this op amp here. Whoops. So if I put that on there, I get that horrible noise. And poked about some other places on here and managed to find over here again a continuous but non squawky, vaguely saxophone like noise. So having got to this point, however, I decided that what I need is a circuit diagram. Uh, I could spend forever trying to re reverse engineer this circuit, but if I can find a circuit diagram, it's so much easier. So that's what I'm going to do, and I will continue in the next video once I have that circuit diagram. So for now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.